Paul, we're at the CEFQXI seminar, the physics of the observer, and one of the topics is, is consciousness, the application of physics to try to explain consciousness. Uh, this has been my obsession for my whole sentient life. I did my doctorate in neuroscience at that time, you know, 50 years ago, I thought we could, you know, neuronal circuits and, uh, and uh, neurophysiology, neuroanatomy, um, and, you know, and they made a lot of progress, but, you know, did not explain consciousness. And now we have a new generation of people who think that physics, whether it's the quantum physics level or, or mathematical mechanisms, are needed to explain this first-person phenomenal experience of, of consciousness. How do you evaluate these new efforts through through uh, fundamental physics and mathematics to explain consciousness? First, I should say it's still a deep mystery. We would like to be able to say there's something particular about what's going on in this complex system in here uh, that is not going on in you know, that complex system over there, that uh, this is conscious, that isn't. But what exactly is it about that? And the use of the word system is uh, critical here, that uh, I don't believe, I don't think many of my colleagues will believe that, say, an atom is individually conscious and that it's a matter of adding up all lots of little bits of consciousness to get a lot of it. It's got something to do with the, the system and the complexity of the system and the way it hangs together uh, as a whole, that uh, if, if this system is the brain. Um, and so uh, that's a very difficult concept to get into physics, because all of physics uh, is really formulated at the fundamental level in terms of local things. That is, uh, a, say, a particle has a force acting on it at that particular point, does something, and we understand behavior at that level. Uh, when we're into something which involves a system, which is uh, many degrees of freedom and distributed throughout space and time, and we're wanting to describe that, at a fundamental level, well, then that's a difficult thing uh, to uh, to write down equations for. Uh, but at the moment, there is a particular uh, point of view which has been put forward by Giulio Tononi that somehow uh, we can characterize the uh, the wholeness of a system like uh, a brain, say, uh, in terms of a particular mathematical quantity, uh, which he, he calls integrated information. Um, and here we have a really key point. I think uh, everybody would agree uh, that one of the things that brains do is process information. We get sense data, comes in, and this information swirls around in the brain and then sometimes leads to agency or action. Uh, so that information processing is important. Um, but there have been great advances in trying to understand the behavior of information uh, in networks uh, and uh, that you can ask, well, where is the information processing taking place? Is it just in a lot of little places, like individual neurons, and that somehow the, the brain is the sum total of it? Or are there collective de degrees of freedom or collective modes in the brain uh, which is doing the heavy lifting of the information processing? Now, there's this, this adage, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Can that be quantified? Uh, that we would say that the brain is a good example. No neuron in my brain is conscious, yet the brain as a whole has consciousness. How do we capture that notion, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts? Well, Tononi has a candidate measure. It may not be the right one, but it's uh, a, a stab at trying to capture that idea mathematically. And I'm very much drawn to that because for the first time, we've got a mathematical quantity which is defined on the whole system, which captures the two aspects, one is its complexity, but the other is its inability to be decomposed into the parts without losing the essential mm -hmm. thing that you're looking for. And I'd like to import that particular quantity uh, into quantum physics to tackle the uh, the measurement and observer problem uh, of quantum physics. I think that this is a great application mm -hmm. of that idea. Mm -hmm. So I can understand possibly how a, a test like that could decide whether something is consciousness is conscious or not conscious that that I can follow what I'd have difficulty was is going to the next step and saying that that is consciousness because it, it gets back to the old so-called identity theory right. so if I have uh, stubbed my toe I have 
impulses along the C fibers to my brain, and people have to say that the feeling of pain is those C fiber firings, and they seem like such radically different categories. Right. It's hard to see that one is the same. Yeah. I have the same problem here because whatever that structure is, how does that create the phenomenal experience? Right, and that's uh, entirely justified because what this is is a quantitative measure of the degree of consciousness, yes. but it doesn't, in my view, address. Uh, what you're describing, which David Chalmers calls the hard problem of consciousness, right. the fact that it is like something to experience the redness of red, and it's quite different from the uh, the sound of a bell or the greenness of green or uh, you know the, the the smell of a of a meal. These are all very different internally. These uh, so-called qualia, which uh, attach to these conscious experiences, is something which. Uh, uh, is outside of uh, the scope of what I've just been saying. And that, that remains a mystery. And, and that's why uh, David Chalmers and others have been increasingly moving towards a panpsychist approach to reality where there is some proto-consciousness in every, in every particle or every wave function that somehow when the combination problem they have, but when you bring it together in some form, you create it. But because... They're not, they, they, they cannot make sense of any identity um, uh, theory, that the phenomenal experience being identical with anything that you say that happens in the brain or physics or, or measures, therefore you have to postulate something completely outside right, of that. Right, that, that, that they want a dualist view of the world. And, and I have some sympathy with that. I don't like panpsychism. I don't like uh, atoms that are a little bit conscious. Um, but I do think that we uh, will almost certainly have to add something uh, to systems that are above a certain threshold of complexity, have a particular amount of integrated information that, we, that the, uh, the qualia, the internal uh, uh, experiences, I don't think can be derived from the physics. Uh, you can't... Yeah, physics deals with uh, particles and forces and things like that. Uh, the mental world deals with um, sensations and thoughts and impressions. And if you open up my head, you just see a lot of atoms and things. You don't see uh, thoughts and uh, sensations and impressions. And so uh, these two uh, may be correlated, but at the end of the day, I don't see that you can ever explain my internal personal experience of the redness of red in terms of um, electrons and signals and, and physical forces. What's the implication of that? Does that mean that you're a so-called substance dualist, just some other thing that's, uh, that exists in reality that has to somehow, somehow work with uh, the physical world? I think there is something else that exists, yes. Uh, um, w where I will part company with some people is to suppose that this other thing could have an independent existence mm -hmm. floating around, mm -hmm. uh, sort of free of the system in which it's instantiated. I think it's part and parcel of the phenomenon, the complexity that we were so associate with brains and who knows, maybe computer systems that might be conscious. I don't think there's anything particularly magical about the, you know, the flesh and blood stuff. Um, but I, uh, I think um, to, to fully explain the world as we experience it, which includes the qualia, for me, I mean, I can't say for you, <laughs> but certainly for me, uh, then there has to be something in, a, in addition to the particles and the forces, yes.